Hey there, thank you for uh, checking out this guide. Uh, my name is Truss. I'm on the Keat Tile server, however that's pronounced, in the Guild Vander Order. And we've put together this Lost Island guide uh, in the hopes that it'll uh, help folks out through this really challenging instance. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started. All right there, good job everyone. You've gotten through all the bosses, which brings you to the final fight, Dr. Lorik. This fight has three phases. Let's go ahead and start on phase one. In phase one, Dr. Lorik is going to do uh, three uh, main abilities, three big things you have to keep track of. Uh, his first one is he's going to throw disease on players, random players, and random places on the floor. Uh, when the disease first lands, it starts out as like a yellow circle, and then it turns into uh, this green, uh, gooey, disease-looking stuff. You need to avoid not only your disease, but the disease that's left behind by other people. Uh, his next thing is uh, satchel charges. Uh, he'll do an emote that says, I've got some tricks up my sleeve. And when, you, when he does that, he'll start throwing out these red um, charges. Kind of, They look like flares. I don't know. You need to, if you're the tank, you need to uh, sidestep those to get out of them. If you're a DPS, you just need to be behind Dr. Lorik in order to not get hit by him. The satchel charges can build up, and you can get up to four charges on you. Each time, they'll, they'll start to tick down, uh, and, and as each one ticks down to zero, it will explode, and you'll take uh, between five and seven K of damage. If you take more than two or three hits from satchel charges, you're just going to die. So you really need to watch out for those. His last ability is he will release specimens from culto tanks. When a culto tank becomes active, everyone needs to DPS it because the damage you do to the culto tank transfers to the specimen. So when the specimen, if you, if you can DPS that tank down to let's say 50%, when that specimen pops out, he'll be at 50% and he'll be much easier to kill. So, in the first phase, here's the rhythm of first phase. There's going to be two sets of disease thrown out that you have to duck and dodge and get around. Then there's going to be four satchel charges, which you need to avoid. And then he's going to activate a culto tank, which you then DPS. Then the specimen will come out of the culto tank, and Dr. Lorik will become uh, attackable again. In which case the tank needs to pick up Dr. Lorik and the specimen. You'll DPS the specimen down and the process will begin again. You'll get two more sets of disease on the floor, uh, four satchel charges, and then he'll he'll activate Culto Tank 2. You'll DPS that specimen and so on and so forth until he finally unleashes all the tanks. Now. To get from phase one to phase two, there's two strategies. There's a, 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 a very aggressive strategy where you try to DPS Dr. Lorik down uh, past 35%, which will push him into phase two. Uh, the other strategy is to um, just sort of survive. Uh, don't worry too much about DPSing Dr. Lorik. Your, your, your job is just to survive and to deal with the Colto tanks and he'll just end up releasing all of the culto tanks and once the, la once the last tank is, is dealt with uh, he will then begin phase two. Uh, when phase two starts uh, actually during phase one uh, we'll just revisit that for a second. Tank you're going to uh, bring Dr. Uh, Dr. Lorik right here to get ready for culto tank one. Uh, after that's taken care of you're going to bring Dr. Lorik down here uh, you're going to deal with uh, the next three culto tanks down here. Um, I didn't really draw it well, but uh, you may want to just pull Dr. Lorik over here, about right here, uh, for when culto tank four gets activated. It's actually on like a platform. you got to go up some stairs or a little ramp or something to get to. And there's another mistake in this drawing. I believe there's a culto tank right here, which makes that culto tank five. And up here will be Culto Tank 6. Sorry about that, but I just don't feel like drawing this again. So anyways, during the first phase, you're going to bring Dr. Lorik here, take care of this tank, bring him here, take care of these two tanks, bring him here to take care of the next tank. 
Now, if you're going for the endurance strategy, you'll then bring Dr. Lorik over here to take care of this tank and back up here to get ready for this tank. If you're going for the aggressive DPS strategy, you'll bring them here, here, and then here. And by the time you get to somewhere between tanks three and four, if you're going for the DPS strategy, you need to have Dr. Lorik, you need to push him into phase two. If you don't, then you might as well just settle in and, and just accept the fact you've got to go through all the tanks. Uh, if you do push Dr. Lorik into phase two, the tank needs to then bring Dr. Lorik over here, right about where the door is. Now, the mechanic for phase two is really easy. In fact, if you can get past phase one, you can almost count on beating this boss. Phase one is the hardest phase. Phase two, uh, Dr. Lorik, you're going to bring him right here. And these little burning rat ghouls are going to start spawning from different places in the lab. And they're going to start slowly creepy crawling up to the group. If a, a burning rat ghoul reaches a group member, it will stun that, that group member uh, almost indefinitely until you either kill that rat ghoul or stun it or push it away or do something. Um, these rat ghouls, you can force push them. You can use concussive charges. You can do stuff to move them around and buy you a little extra time. So anyways, you, you, you have Dr. Lorik here. And the, the job here is to DPS him down past 10%. Now, the longer it takes you to DPS him down, the more and more and more flaming rat ghouls are going to spawn. And eventually, they'll overwhelm the party. So, we're DPSing him down. Oh, and, and during this time, he'll kind of jump on random party members and stun them. But there's nothing you can do about that. So, we DPS him down. We get him past 10%, and Phase 3 begins. Once Phase 3 begins, you're also going to tank him about right here. All the DPS and healers and everyone are going to line up somewhere over here. Uh, it, it's helpful if you can get near your healer for AOE heals. Dr. Lorik at the beginning of Phase 3 is going to heal himself back up to 100%. And Phase 3 is just a straight out DPS race. Uh, Dr. Lorik is going to throw out uh, these um, disease explosions. Each explosion that hits you does more and more and more damage. Eventually, uh, you just can't get healed through it, and, and you wipe. Uh, if you do uh, DPS Dr. Lork down to 0%, uh, you'll win the fight. And that's just all there is to this fight. Um, good luck, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this guide. I, if you didn't enjoy it, I at least hope it was helpful. Uh, have fun in there, and we'll see you around. Bye. Never thought you'd make it this far. You tricks up my sleeve!
Kill the ass. Good job, guys. Bring him to the front door. I'll trust. All right, get ready. Yep. All right, I'm gonna blow my cool down. Excellent job, guys. 